everyone, my name's Lucy and on the 15th of March 2016 I gave birth at 25 weeks pregnant. So from about 16 weeks pregnant I generally was not feeling well, wasn't feeling myself. I fainted, uh, I felt dizzy, I had breathlessness, I had episodes of heart palpitations, just felt really weak all the time. My vision was quite blurry as well. I saw the doctor because I was getting really sick of it. I had high blood pressure when the doctor checked it. So I got sent for blood tests for various different things. I had a urine test to see if there was any protein in my urine, which there wasn't. They said it was all fine. They seemed to think that I might be anemic, which is a lack of iron in the blood, which makes you feel really weak and breathless and all these various things that I'd been having so it would have made sense for me to be anemic but my all my blood results came back satisfactory and so I got a phone call from the community midwife saying that I should go in for regular blood pressure checks just to keep an eye on it and make sure it's not going crazy off the charts high so the next appointment I had with them it had actually gone up higher um, and I also had protein in my urine, so they suspected preeclampsia. And it can be really, really serious both for you and your baby. So I was really thankful that they were planning to monitor me. And because I'd had protein in my urine and they suspected preeclampsia, I was sent up to the day assessment unit to be checked out further. Now, when I went up to the day assessment unit, there was a very, very, very long waiting time, which... I understand there's a lot of other people who need seeing but eight hours we were in the waiting room and um, so by that time things had changed and when I got checked my blood pressure seemed a bit more normal and um, I didn't have any protein in my urine and they basically said at that moment in time they could say that it definitely wasn't preeclampsia but they couldn't say that it wasn't going to turn into preeclampsia and that could be the next day, the next week, the next month. So they wanted me to keep going to my community midwife for twice weekly blood pressure checks. Uh, two days later I was at a choir convention and all of a sudden I just came over really really hot and started to get really strong heart palpitations and it was it was really scary and then it slowly got worse. I couldn't catch my breath at all. The vision went from the sides of my eyes. I could still see in front, but both sides just completely disappeared. And then I just went really cold, really clammy. And I went like that to wipe my face and I was covered in sweat. Like, I know that's horrible, but so I, I was really close to passing out. So I woke up at five o'clock in the morning the next day. I was getting these tightenings as they call them which I thought were Braxton Hicks so I just sort of rolled over tried to go back to sleep tried to push it to the back of my mind yes it's uncomfortable but it doesn't hurt and then every 20 minutes I was getting woken up with with these cramps and they were slowly getting worse and more painful and more intense and what it felt like they were getting tighter and tighter so at seven o'clock I rang the day assessment unit and just explained what happened. They said to take some paracetamol and make my way up there. So at the day assessment unit we waited two hours to be seen and they wanted to do a swab to test if I was likely to go into labour or not. So she examined me and said that she could see the membranes were bulging and that my cervix was slightly open. So I was like, oh God, uh, I think this is it, this is happening. Straight away they were like, we need to get you to the delivery suite, we're going to put a cannula in your hand, and I had a steroid injection in my leg. Now the steroid injections, they normally do two steroid injections 24 hours apart, and that is to help the baby's lungs. So I was wheeled up to the delivery suite in a bed, like on casualty, but not as fast. <laughs> Um, and I felt like a complete invalid because I was just like, I could walk, it's fine, I'll walk. It's... And they were like, no, you stay down. <laughs> um, 
So then the first thing that happened in the delivery suite was they put me into a sexy hospital gown, which I was really happy about. Through the cannula in my hand, they gave me magnesium sulfate. Now, they put it in over five minutes and they said to me, you might feel a little bit warm, like you're having a hot flush. Um, yeah, that was a bit of an understatement because... When it was actually happening, I felt like my whole back was on fire and it just got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse for the five minutes that it was going in. And I was just there like, oh, oh God, this is a bit much. Just before 9pm, my waters broke. I was on the toilet at the time and it just felt like a little pop. And then it just felt like I was still weeing, but I didn't need to wee. And that's really gross, but... Some people might want to know what it feels like. Uh, I was examined again after that and told that they could see the baby's head and that it had a lot of hair. So I didn't know if that was a good thing or not. But that's kind of when I realised that that it's definitely happening. It's definitely, I am in labour, it's happening and that's that. Just kind of accepted it for what it was. I wasn't really scared or... Uh, panicking or anything like that I was actually really really calm but um I think somewhere in my brain I was thinking I hope I hope the baby's going to be okay. A consultant came in to speak to me about if I would be willing to have a cesarean if it got to that if it was an emergency situation. The consultant also said that in the blood tests that they'd taken they were looking at my infection markers um and that they were going up, so they, they suspected an infection. A neonatologist also came to speak to us. Um, they're the doctors for the really, really tiny babies or the babies that need special help in the neonatal intensive care unit, also known as NICU. She explained to us about survival rates of babies born at 25 weeks, and if it was a female they have higher chance, they, they do better than boys, um, but we didn't know what we were having. So I was examined again, and they said that my cervix was fully dilated, they couldn't feel any cervix at all, um, so I was put on the monitors for the baby's heart rate, and then it was okay for a while, and then it dropped quite considerably, it, it went really, really slow. Um, so I was told to try and push uh, to try and get the baby out because it was in a bit of distress. So after a little bit of pushing and a little bit of help and people doing various things, I managed to give birth. And she arrived at 1.58am on the 15th of March. She was one pound and eight ounces and we named her Robin May. So wasn't like a normal birth as you'd expect she was taken straight away into the corner and they had to try and make her stable um so that involved giving her surfactant for her lungs which is something that babies produce themselves when they're in the womb but she wasn't quite in there long enough to to produce enough of that it was really intense and I didn't know if she was a girl or a boy. I didn't know uh, anything about her. And I couldn't see her because there were lots of people working around her. They had to put a tube in to help her breathe as well. But I did hear someone say, is baby breathing? And I waited for the response and someone else said yes. And that was just like huge relief. She's alive. Um. And then they brought her over to me to for me to give her a kiss and then she was taken away in an incubator. <clears throat> James went with her and I was just left in a room by myself having had a baby but didn't have my baby and she was taken straight away down to NICU. I had three doses of antibiotics through a drip throughout that day and then I went on to tablets and they lasted for a week. I had a shower, which James had to help me with because I couldn't really move properly just from being 
given birth and I wasn't on any pain medication apart from paracetamol and codeine. So after the shower, I was wheeled down in a wheelchair by James to NICU to go and see my baby for the first time. So the doctors suspected that I had an infection called chorioamnionitis. Now, that is when normal bacteria that is around that area gets into the wrong place, the womb. It shouldn't be there. Um, and it can either be that your cervix opens and the bacteria gets in, or the bacteria gets in, which causes you to go into labour. Your body thinks, oh no, this isn't right. The safest thing for both of them is for baby to come out now. Later on, at an appointment with my community midwife, that was confirmed that I definitely did have chorioamnionitis. It was severe acute chorioamnionitis with phonocytis, which is inflammation from the infection. Um, so even though it's not good that I had it, it was good that I found out that that's definitely what it was. And that was determined from my placenta being sent off to the pathology lab to be tested. And that was the report from that that confirmed it. Um, it just means that I didn't do anything wrong. Um, that was my first question to them. Was it something I did? It makes you feel really guilty because you you're responsible for carrying this human and it just felt like I'd cheated I'd got out of it early and that maybe I'd done something wrong to make it happen but everybody said to me there's absolutely nothing that you did wrong it was an infection there's nothing you could have done um so don't feel guilty and even though people say that it is kind of hard not to <laughs> Um, so my plan is to do a weekly blog um, with news of how Robin's doing and to answer any questions that you guys have and also I feel like it's a really good way to let everybody know what's going on, um, certain aspects of our journey so far and in the future and also it's really difficult to keep up with everyone individually when you're going back and forth to the hospital each day. So um, I think it's going to be a really good way of keeping everyone up to date.